I've actually had this prop for probably like two months now and they told me specifically not to make a review on it because it's a prototype prop but at this point there's so many people that have this prop and have shown this prop that I, I'm not even going to listen to them anymore. This prop is its just too good to keep like secret and you all already know about it I'm sure if you've been watching my channel I use it a lot and I've posted a lot of videos with it already but now I'm actually going to explain to you what the prop is about the prop and how it works. So if you don't already know who Sage Thayer is, Sage Thayer is a uh, designer, he's an engineer, and he's designed a bunch of props already. He's designed the Racecraft props, he's designed a couple of props for Furious, and uh, now he's designed for Emacs, and um, he's working with other companies and other places as well. He has created, I mean, he, he's pretty much developed his own software on how to design these props, and over designing so many of them, he's gained a lot of experience and a lot of a lot of knowledge about how these things work. At this point, his props all sort of somewhat look similar, but that's for a reason because the software and the math tells him that this is how the prop is supposed to look. But he can change the way the prop feels with just minor, minor differences with the with the prop. Like he can tweak a prop, it'll look very similar, but it's going to feel very different in the air. And this prop, while it might look like the racecraft prop, the 51 or 5051, it does not perform anything like the 50, it doesn't, you, I, if you gave me two quads, one with the 5051 and one with this prop, I would not even guess that they would be anything alike. Nothing. <laughs> they don't perform the same. Anyways, there's, there's no secret here that this is my preferred prop for everything. I, I think this prop feels incredible in the air, incredible in the air, and I'm actually making this review because I only had like three sets of this prop and I only have one and a half sets left so I'm gonna make this review before I break all my sets and I don't even know when I'm getting more they've said that they're, they're gonna come out in a couple weeks but I don't know I'm not sure so I'm gonna do my best and just explain to you about this prop and we'll go from there so yesterday I was flying the new HQ prop the 4.3 pitch uh, HQ prop and it feels amazing and it's super light the uh, Avan prop is about 1.6 grams heavier which I'll discuss in a second but um, the HQ prop is, is fantastic, except that it doesn't really suit me. I'm not really used to the 5x4x3 blade, and I'm not used to the way it works and the way it kind of bends and flexes. And, and in reality, I think the glass fiber 5x4x3 is still the best one because it gives you more accurate response to your throttle. When I'm coming out of dives with this prop or doing various moves, it's very soft and it's kind of sort of unpredictable. While it's a fantastic prop, for me, I, I can't really live with that unpredictability because it makes me nervous. It makes me unconfident when I come out of dives or do certain moves. That being said, it's also a very, very smooth prop because I think it's so flexible. I mean, it's look out, I don't know if that's what the reason is, but it's so flexible that I feel like when I'm coming out of dives, it's like bouncing in the air. So it makes sense that it would be so smooth. Conversely, the Avan prop is not that flexible. It's, it's like three times as stiff. So the durability of the HQ is actually higher than the Avan because it doesn't, I mean it just bends. The Avan prop is stiff so it breaks, although it is very, very durable before it breaks. But if you run into something, it's, it's gonna break. It's not just gonna like fold. You can't just fold it back. Although I do have a prop here that's folded, uh, but I wouldn't even bother trying to fold it back. It's just, when a prop folds and kind of twists, there's no point in trying to fold it back. It's not gonna work out. This is also the first prop that was specifically designed for a motor. This was specifically, the tri-blade version was specifically designed for the Emacs 2306-2400 kV motor. And I've tried it on that motor and it's great, it's great, I just don't like lower kV. I don't like 2300 or 2400 kV. So I prefer this prop on a beefy 2500 kV motor. And you should also note that this prop is designed for a motor that has torque. It does not work on a motor that does not have a lot of torque. It, it's you just keep that in mind. Like, don't even bother putting this prop on a 2205 or a 2204. Yeah, it'll be okay. It'll have a similar control feel, but it's not. It's not any good. So Sage has designed this prop with some very, very specific features. Very nice features. Very, very well performing features. The first thing that really impressed me about it was that he told me that he actually designed the prop to reduce prop wash. The way he explained it to me was um, not something I can really explain or repeat correctly, but basically he was saying that he designed the prop such that when it's spiraling through the air, the spiral of the vortex of, of uh, drag coming off the prop is coming off at a perfect spiral. And uh, somehow that reduces the prop wash and, and the way the flight controller manages things. So I don't know what it is, but it actually worked. I put it on a bunch of different quads that were not tuned for anything, and they all had almost none or much, much reduced prop wash. So it had to be the prop that was doing the work. I, 
it wasn't, couldn't have been the tune. It couldn't have been the the, prod, the quad was just better tuned for this prop. Other features are that um, actually this is a this is a prototype version. The final version will have a uh, roughened surface. You can take a look at the uh, 5152 from Gemfan, which has a very slick surface, and um, Emacs is going to go with a roughened surface because they think it might, or Sage thinks it might, no, actually Emacs thinks it might, um, improve the lamination uh, properties of the prop and keep the air laminated to the prop because it is a very steep pitch. This is a prop that was designed for a cruising speed of 70 miles per hour. That's a very high cruising speed, and it has excellent, excellent control feel. I personally think it has better control feel than the HQ prop, but that's my personal feeling. And the last feature, which is what gives it the control feel, is the best part about this prop. Uh, Sage has actually designed the airfoil of this blade to be variable. So as it goes down the blade, it actually changes. And about two thirds down the blade, you get a bump. I, when I run my finger down it, I feel a bump in the airfoil. And he says that that's actually what gives it the control feel. And that's amazing. That's really amazing because um, when you are flying slow or trying to do accurate maneuvers, the blade is not spinning up fast, so only really the end of the blade is doing the work, and that is where he's focused on to improve the control feel, which is very smart. It's got winglets, it's very, very quiet, and let's see how it flies. One thing to note is that even though this prop weighs 1.6 grams more, that's not necessarily a horrible thing as long as you have a motor that can manage that weight because the super light HQ prop actually has really, not poor, but less yaw authority. And uh, that's probably because the prop is just has such low inertia that the motors have to spin up much more to get the yaw movement to actually move. The Emacs blade actually has a good heft to it, so when the motor does spin up to try and yaw it around, it's got some counterbalancing yaw uh, inertia to help it actually twist around. You're probably noticing that I'm, I'm very accurate in my movements here. Nothing else has changed on this quad. This is the, exactly the same quad that I was flying yesterday. So you can uh, automatically you see that I have just immediately more confidence when I'm flying this blade. It's it's really it just feels so nice in the air and it's so it's so accurate when I put the throttle where I want it to be. Something I didn't like about the HQ blade is that the HQ blade has kind of like a hump of power in the 40 to 75 percent power range uh, throttle range, and that's really where it makes most of the throttle. Once you go past the 70 75 percent throttle point then you're really not getting all that much more thrust. I mean, it is making more thrust, but it kind of starts tapering off. The Emacs blade is almost perfectly linear. So when I put my throttle exactly where I want it to be, I'm getting exactly what I think I'm getting. So it's not like I'm kind of guessing in the middle of this very sensitive hump. And people have told me that I should put Expo on my throttle, but I don't like putting Expo on, Expo on my throttle because it just makes things feel weird. It's masking the props personality, it's masking the prop's characteristics in the air. Why, why bother doing that? I'll just use a prop that, that does what I want it to do. I think we have plenty of props to choose from today, so we're, we're fortunate in that matter, so I, I don't feel a need to try and fiddle with my settings in order to get the control feel that I want. This is also one of the quietest props I've ever heard, which is a great thing. It, I mean, I like the noise that the quad makes, but I prefer it to make no noise because I don't want to disturb anybody, as you can see flying here in my neighborhood, which I, I don't recommend anybody do because it's generally just unsafe, but I really only fly maybe a pack or two every so often, and I try to keep an eye out, and I don't disturb anybody. Nobody really complains because I'm only flying for maybe five minutes at a time every couple of days, so I don't, I don't really disturb much. This prop is extremely grippy. It feels more like a quad blade than a tri-blade. You can hear it when I'm going around turns. It feels like it's just like taking chunks out of the air. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like it's like zipping through the air and wafting air. It's just like it's like your your shoe on the ground just dragging the rubber against the cement. It's it sounds amazing and you really feel it too. It really halts and moves when you want it to. Something that is kind of interesting is that the Gemfan 5152 actually has a, a shallower pitch on the blade. Physically, it looks shallower. But I actually believe that the 5152 is a little bit faster when I'm flying it. When I am flying, I feel like the 5152 gives me more punch and more top speed. But what the Emacs does is gives me far more control, and it gives me, gives me a smoothness factor. The HQ blade, something that's very special about it is that it smooths out kind of all your moves, 
the Emacs blade does a similar thing. It gives you that kind of smoothness when you put the throttle, when you give it some throttle onside. It's kind of wafting through the air. It's not just immediately like punching you and giving you like a kick in the butt, like to move the quad. So it's really nice in that respect, and it feels a lot like the HU blade in that respect. This blade really feels like a mix of the Gemfan 5152 with the HQ 5x4x3, which is really the perfect mix. The most incredible thing about this prop is that it's not slow, but it has amazing control feel. I can't stress that enough. The control of this prop is amazing. It's designed for the 2306, a very torquey motor and a lower KV because it needs that torque, but I personally prefer it on a very torquey, higher KV motor. I'm running the uh, newer Hyperlite 2207, 2522 KV motors, which uh, this style is not available yet. It's going to be a little bit lighter, but it has plenty of torque to manage this prop. The amp draw of the prop is not low, as you can assume. I mean, look at that pitch. That pitch is kind of extreme. It's definitely not low but it's not inefficient either. The prop was designed to be most efficient at moving at 70 miles per hour. That's a pretty good speed, so it's that's where we want it to be. I mean, we're not always moving at 70 miles per hour, but we would prefer a prop to be more efficient at moving rather than a hover. So this prop is not really that fantastic in a hover, but it'll go really well. If you already have a 2206 motor, I recommend nothing less than a 2206 motor with this prop. Any 2206 motor below 2600 kV you should absolutely try this prop. They also have a twin blade version, which is gonna be perfect for 2600 and up KV, but 2206, 2500 KV is the absolute minimum amount of torque I would recommend you run this prop on. A more recommended motor would be a 2306, or a 2407, or a 2506, or a 2207. I personally think the 2207 is the perfect motor for this prop, and it probably has about the same torque as a 2306, so it's it's right in there. It's really, really perfect. It feels... I can't even stress how much I like this prop. It, it just it feels truly incredible. And they waited so long for it to come out. I don't know why. They sent it to me so long ago, and I begged them, release the prototype, it doesn't matter, it flies amazing, you're gonna capture the whole market with this prop. That was before there were a couple of new props coming. At this point, there's two new props that are on their way that I'm already testing that feel amazing, they really do feel amazing. One of them is an acrobatic prop, and it feels very similar to the, similar to the 5x4x3, and it does have the accuracy of the throttle response that I like, as well as the punch that I like, and the softness and the smoothness. It feels very similar to this prop, except that it has a little bit more of a kick, so it's really just preference at this point. By now, we have so many prop options, and so much of these props are now highly engineered, nicely drawn, well tested, that really there's, choose any prop that's come out in the past you know, couple of months, and you can't really go wrong with it. I personally, I'm gonna stick to this prop. I only have six of them left, which is really, really sad, but um, I'm just gonna fly them until they break and hope that they come out pretty soon.